How is it going folks and happy Monday. We're back with Park to Prem. Today is episode number 70 and today we're in the Premier League. Yes, it is a official promotion of course confirmed at the end of last week and with that today we are back to well try and prepare for life in the Premier League. Our media prediction is 17th going into the summer. The press believe that we are not in the bottom three teams in the Premier League to start the summer. That has to fill us with a little bit of confidence. That said, there's definitely areas of the team I want to improve. I will say saying the fact we're predicted to finish 17th on our club screen when I come here into this bit of the Premier League. Uh, we are now predicted to finish 18th. So uh, it, we're still in a relegation scrap. Probably. Anyway, the board expectation for this year is to avoid relegation from the Premier League. And in terms of the finances, they're not the healthiest they've ever been. Of course, we signed Michael Bolton for £28 million last year. As of last episode, we also signed Lee Min permanently. He is joining us from Tottenham for £14 million. A big investment, but I think for a 20-year-old with bags of current ability, versatile as well, it's a sensible deal. With that in mind... I have already started to sell some players to try and generate some funds. Right now, Zito is looking like he will be leaving the building, currently in talks with Ipswich Town. This guy, a good player. We picked him up for a free transfer, though. Six goals in the championship wasn't exactly inspiring. So naturally, when Ipswich Town bid £22.5 million, Kind of felt like we had to accept that. It is £15 million up front, £7.5 million in six months' time. And on top of that, there's a 50% profit of next sale. Of course, with our promotion, player reputations have risen, the club's reputation has risen, and it's kind of allowing us now to be in a situation where a squad player like Zitto... I can let go for some money. I have already made one signing heading into the summer. That man is Junya Takahashi. Of course, we are wearing a Japan supporter shirt here. I felt like I had to welcome him in. He is going to be our new backup striker. Truth be told, I've kind of brought him in to be what Zito was for us this year. I feel like his superior physicals, slightly better technicals are going to help him fit into our system better. Takahashi joining us for £1.8 million. So yeah, a straight swap of those two strikers is like £20 million to spend elsewhere. I have already started to plan where I might want to strengthen the team heading into this summer. I think the big things I want to pick up are a new goalkeeper and a new centre-back. Jedinak, Jedinak, he's been good for us, the Australian, but I am a little bit concerned he's perhaps not of the level to play in the Premier League. Was always a concern with promotion last year that maybe we were climbing too quickly for some of the younger players in our team to develop and be Premier League ready. I think Joel here is just a little bit short of that. Although saying all of that, the fact he can play left-back, right-back, centre-back and is 21, means he's going to be a really useful squad player. In my preliminary starting 11, I have already dropped Kinski down to the bench. The 29-year-old Czech goalkeeper, not a bad goalkeeper by any means, but he's had issues of injuries during his time at the club. He's actually unhappy at the moment as well. And as good as he is, I feel like there's got to be a better goalkeeper out there. He's not wowed me in recent years. And whilst it is actually quite hard for goalkeepers to wow in Football Manager, given just the nature of the match engine and stuff, I feel like a new goalkeeper is an order of the day. Besides those two positions though, uh, there's no area where I'm looking and thinking, oh my god, we need to sort something out urgently. I actually really like the skeleton of this team. I feel like Endai and Bolton at fullback are great. Gasperi, of course, joined us in League One. He has really grown up with the club and whilst he is lacking perhaps in a couple of technicals and some mentals, I feel like he's really, really good physicals, more than make up for that kind of gap in his game. In terms of defensive midfielders, Jao Victor of course joined us in League One as well. So he has grown up with the club Club. No intention of letting him go. He is now contracted for the next six years. Alongside him, Riviera has been attracting a little bit of interest from teams in Saudi Arabia. That's a little bit scary. Three years left on his current deal. Of course, the 23-year-old only joined us last summer for £6 million. No real intention of selling him. I feel like for a deep-line playmaker in our system, he is just a perfect fit. As we head into the final third, sometimes when you get promoted to the Premier League, there's this fear that maybe you've not got goals in your team. When I look at the attacking talent that we've got, I think we've got players that are Premier League ready. Sam Faye attracting interest. Another player who I view as untouchable. Of course, he came through our youth intake back in League 2. Has consistently featured in the first team. I'd love to make him the player we really build around. With his 11 leadership as well, I am thinking about moving him up to be vice-captain this year. I don't know if that's a particularly spicy take. Obviously, he's 19. He's relatively young still. And in fact, he only turned 19 like last week. But he has played 122 first-team games for us. Of course, alongside him, the man who's leading the way in terms of first-team games for us, Ngoma. 237 games in the league for us. He is our captain. He is, of course, on a new deal that was signed as of a couple of episodes ago. £37,000 a week does make him one of the top earners at the club. But of course, after many years working part-time 
Barcelona and given the fact we're in the Premier League, we can afford to give him big bucks now. The striking area is still an area where I wouldn't mind adding maybe a little bit more depth. Of course, we've got Ospina and Rojas, the two Rogers, superb in the year, just gone in the championship. Two players that on paper look like they should be capable of doing it in the Premier League as well. With Takahashi joining, there is a good immediate backup. I do feel like maybe we're lacking a big meaty forward. So he's maybe got a bit more of a physical aerial presence about them. Our current kind of fourth choice striker, if we just look at things here, is probably, uh, it's probably near late. And when I look at Look at Nia and his valuation of £9 million. I do think maybe I should be cashing in on you. Maybe as well cashing in on Almsbacken. This guy is 19, but I have got question marks over his potential. Could be a case of selling him while he's hot. And if these two kind of Scandinavian strikers do leave the club we need more attackers. Currently, there are 28 players in the first team. And to be fair, when you look at it kind of blocked out, it looks like there's a load of depth. But actually, there's a fair few players in this list of kind of players unselected on the bench. I could probably do with moving on. Zitto is already on his way out. Marino is unhappy I didn't play him as a no-nonsense centre-back and he's now trying to force a move. Given the fact he wasn't exactly inspiring last year, I am willing to sell him. We signed him for £4.7 million. Valuation right now of 11.5. There is interest in him, so probably a player will look to move on. If we do sell him, we might want to get in a new fourth-choice centre-back. And elsewhere in the team, there's players like Coyote, who were good depth players in the Championship that we never really had to call upon that I could do with moving on. Nearly, I suppose, in that similar bracket. Kind of players who were the emergency backups of the Championship, with hopefully some new first-team players coming in. Everyone moves down the pecking order. Players like these guys just kind of drop off the bottom. Anyway, you might have noticed over on the left-hand side, I have had some bids for players. We'll talk about those in just a moment. I've not yet run the intro. I've already been talking for like five minutes. Let's run that. And then we'll talk about the fact that Moose and DIA already has bids on him. I don't think he's for sale, but you know, anything could happen today. It's a transfer special. Like I already said, happy Monday. I hope you had a lovely weekend. We are back now on the 24th of June because I decided this year to wait for the season tick-over date to happen. The reality is that without our Premier League kind of reputation mini boost you get with promotion confirmed, the options that we had in terms of players we could sign was going to be a little bit limited. But that does mean that now when we look at things, our first game of the season is... How, well, how long away is it? It's about six weeks away. It's away against Arsenal. That's not a fun first game of the season, is it? So Arsenal await us, but before all of that, wheeling and dealing needs to happen. And it's going to start right away because I've got a couple of transfer offers here that I ignored to kind of come back now to talk about. The first, Suleimane Kamara, 19 years old, Senegalese international. This guy, still not sure if he's going to be an attacking mid or a right back for us. I feel like he could kind of do both jobs, bizarrely. But yes, he has been attracting some interest. He is a player that when I look at the teams interested in him, I have to assume he has some mad potential. You can see here, Man City want him, PSG want him, Arsenal, Liverpool have already made a bid, although I'll say now their bid is pitiful. Currently, his valuation is 7.4 to 10.5 million pounds. You might be sat there thinking, Jack, he's only got two years left on his current deal. Are you worried? The answer to that is no. He's already agreed to sign a new contract that was going to kick in at the end of this season. At uh, the end of the season is now. So I think in a click of continue, he will have a new deal. I don't know how much I'd actually be willing to selling for, but given the fact he's 19 with this really high potential and the list of teams interested, I almost feel like he's untouchable. There's not really a reason to sell him. He could be a good squad player this year. Sorry, Liverpool, you might have made a good bid. It's going to be rejected. NDIA, of course, the other man with interest in him. I, don't, I just don't really want to sell him. Of course, we have signed now Lee Min for £14.5 million. Two very different types of left back. Lee Min is really, really good when it comes to his physicals and mentals, but just isn't quite as complete going forward. With our system, of course, we do play with these really creative attacking fullbacks. And so with that in mind, I don't put quite as much stock in some of the defensive attributes, such as tackling and marking. Really, our wingbacks do stuff going forward. And whilst Lee Min has that physical edge to get up the pitch quicker, and uh, I can just do a little bit more in the final third. That said, I kind of like both these guys, so I think I'm going to reject these bids. I don't even really want to negotiate. They're not that high. £38 million for him? We can do so much better. Of course, with our promotion confirmed as well, his contract did have an automatic kind of extension triggered. He's now contracted for six years. But even if he cries, I'd have to sell him. 
Now, I will say, just between last episode and this episode, as I hit continue, I did have a little look at players available. There's a man who I'm just going to go for immediately, and I bet when you look at the list of players on this list, you can figure out who it might be. There's a 17-year-old on my list of players that we've got scouted who's got four-star current ability and five-star potential. It is this guy, Misiak. He is a Belgium international at 17. He looks absolutely insane. He's been playing in the second tier, I believe, of Belgium for the year just gone. Professional personality, good determination, really good mentals, really good technicals. I, I, it's just too obvious, isn't it? I don't really need an attacking midfielder, but I feel like I just have to do it. His agent reckons he's going to want between 4.9 and 7.5 million pounds. Uh, it's not a small sum of money, but it's a sum of money we can afford. Given the fact that this year we are potentially going to make a load of money, our wage budget hasn't shot up that much. And with all the TV money we've got coming in, we are going to be squirreling away and the bank balance slowly kind of creeping up. So I am going to do some more bids that involve installments. I don't kind of view these as as much of a financial gamble as perhaps they were in in previous years. I'm going to offer 2.5 million up front, 4.5 million over three years. I knew I should have removed and excluded the percentage of profit. Just a little tip here. When you come to negotiate with a player, even if it's not included as an additional clause right away, if you just come here and add the clause in, then click remove and exclude, the team then won't sneak it in. They weren't that happy with my previous offer. They tried to get in a few extra clauses. I'll offer a little bit more money. I feel like at 8 million pounds, this guy would still be a mad deal. And they're happy with that. Sometimes when you get to this screen here, right, your player search screen, there's just a player that's too obvious to not side. Am I mad thinking this guy's just a, a no-brainer? He's just, he's just ridiculous, isn't it? It's the biggest no-brainer of no-brainers. I'm now tempted just to look at other players that are available at aged at most 21. Of course, our reputation has jumped up. Talked about the need to maybe bring in a big physical forward. Curland here really isn't a physical forward. But he does look very, very good, doesn't he? 19 years old, Danish youth international. Great creativity, not maybe your typical advance forward, a bit more of a creative type, has this release clause of £7 million. He's actually quite similar to the guy we just looked at, isn't he? I mean, Kurland is more of a striker, Misiek is more of a centre attack in mid, but given the system that we play, having players that can play both those areas is somewhat beneficial to our depth. I really like the look of Kurland here. Is it stupid if I just sign the first two players that show up on the list of players available? I just look at their valuations compared to everyone around them. I look at their age. I look at their potential. I'm kind of just sold. Now, because this is a release clause, they're not going to accept anything less. So we'll just bid the 7.75 million. Uh, Eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed here as well, Patrick Com. Can you remember this guy? He was a striker we looked at last transfer special last summer. And I was really annoyed that I couldn't sign him. He's actually just been relegated with mines with two goals in 25 games. When I look at him now with the benefit of hindsight and the players that we've got instead... He doesn't feel nearly as good all of a sudden. The board want to discuss current season expectations. Unsurprisingly, I'm, I'm not going to touch these. Look, if we avoid relegation, I'll be a happy camper. Also, I'm going to go back in time slightly just to show you this inbox item, just because, you know, I, I like to flex the success of transfers. Look, wh why not celebrate your wins? Miyazawa, signing of the year for us. Rojas and Riviere also in there. Diego Marino, who we're currently looking to sell, actually finished kind of fifth place in the signings of the year. Safe to say transfers last year worked out well. I'm hoping we're going to find more home runs this year. So Zitto's leaving the building for £15 million, but it will rise to 22 and a half. With these two players we're looking to bring in, we're spending around £10 million. So yeah, adding some depth, adding it in the areas where I kind of wanted to get it. This is good. One thing we have got to remember is we are limited on the amount of young players we can bring into the club. Teens can sign no more than six under 21 foreign players from abroad in a year. Annoyingly, there was a couple of transfers I arranged for the future that went through earlier on this summer that count towards this total. Uh, I've gone back too many years here. Where am I? I'm lost in time. Okay, here we are. So Cabe Cabezas? Cabeza? Ecuadorian viewers. If there's one Ecuadorian viewer out there, please let me know. Carlos here is joining us. He looks like a good youth player. Sadly, I think he and also the other man we've picked up in Rennie Hansen are going to count towards this under 20 kind of limit on players that we can sign. So if we sign the two players we're also looking at, we've already used four of the six slots. I'm going to have to change my transfer tactics this year. I can't just hoard youngsters. Both of those players I've just shown are going to be good players down the line. I don't expect them to contribute immediately this year. I suppose that's the difference between those players and Misiak and Kurland. I look at both these players as just guys who can come in and be good Premier League squad players. Oh, the fact we can attract players like this is exciting. I have just noticed with Misiak, he doesn't actually turn 18 until September, so he wouldn't join us till January. That, that's fine. Okay, Misiak is very interested in joining us. He does want a minimum release clause of 
well, what was it? £40 million. No one liked that. His playing time, I am willing to tell him he will immediately be a fringe player and down the line he'll be an impact sub. I'm going to hope that he likes these promises. How does this sound? He loves it. Now, I'm going to remove the minimum release clause. He wants £11,000. I'm willing to give him way more than that. I have noticed there are some big teams interested in him. With that in mind, I want to try and lock him down on a long deal whilst we can. He won't join us till January. I'm g this might seem ridiculous. I'm just going to offer him £20,000 now. And that is an absurd amount of money. Um, it's obviously cr it is insane. Let's be real. It's way more than what he's asking for. But I feel like in six years' time, we'll look at this as a bit of a genius deal to get done when we have. Okay, he is really happy with those terms, so we're going to finalise that. And yeah, I, I feel like when you look at this guy, £20,000 a week for him, it just makes sense. If that means that we can sign him over the likes of AC Milan and Napoli, it's worth every penny. Curland, on the other hand, wants to be a star player immediately. Wants to be a star player? Curland, you want to be a star player immediately? That is a stretch. You probably will be a very useful sub-option for me. He wants to play as an advanced forward. I mean, we play with advanced forwards. That's kind of fine. I do feel like he'd be a better, more creative striker. But if for 12 months I have to play him in our regular system, uh, kind of with the role that we'd use anyway, I suppose that's okay. In terms of his demands, this is where things might get a little bit scary. Just as a reminder, in Gomez on £37,500, players are now going to use that as a bit of a benchmark. In terms of the contract I'm going to offer him here, I'm going to offer him a five-year deal and see what he says. Okay, that's... I mean, it's not actually that bad. It just looks more scary because it's all in yellow and orange. I'm going to ask him to sign a five-year deal, but I'll offer him a significantly higher signing on bonus and also agent fee. Hopefully, he's a-okay with that. He is. We're going to finalise that deal. Oh, I feel like he's very, very good. He kind of reminds me, and this might be blasphemous, he kind of reminds me of Ingoma. He's like a more technical kind of version of Ingoma. Not the quickest player in the world, not the smartest player in the world, but just very good creatively. How on brand, by the way, is it going to be if I finally sign Ingoma to this long-term deal and then I instantly replace him with an 18 or 19-year-old from <laughs> Denmark? I said I needed a centre-back and a goalkeeper. I'm spending £10 million on Neva. This might sound a little bit weird, but I do find Premier League transfer windows a little less stressful than kind of the lower league transfer windows. I think it's because there's fewer Premier League quality players in the world of football, and therefore kind of having to make decisions between different players and find the players can sometimes be a little bit easier. When you're in kind of League One, there's way more players per position to sift through that might be good enough and might want to join you. Whereas here... I don't know, you just get money thrown at you and you get to be picky and choosy. And speaking of money being thrown at us, yeah, Premier League TV rights over the year. We're going to receive £80 million. Everyone love that. Mentioned earlier the fact that Kamara was signing a new deal. That new deal that he has, uh, well, signed has just kicked in. It's a three-year deal. It had a contract extension after promotion. But, of course, we've already been promoted. So this clause is actually absolutely pointless. But he's only on £4,000 a week, so it's fine. I've already got the ball moving on some players we're looking to sign. I do feel like there's players at Masters that I maybe need to look to move on. I mean, with respect to Masters, we signed him when we were in League 2. And whilst he's done a very good job up to the Championship, I do just feel like the Premier League is probably going to be a step too far for him. He was already unhappy at the club anyway, and he's in the last year of his contract. Currently valued at six to six point five million pounds. I'm going to transfer list him and offer him out. If we get anywhere close to five million, I'll probably just take it. Sean Nesbitt is someone who we've had come through our academy, a good defensive player. Of course, we signed him on a free transfer many a year ago. That said, at 21 years old, in spite of the fact that he's got caps for the Northern Ireland national team, I just don't really feel like he's all that great. His valuation is eight point four to nine point two million pounds. Apparently, Wrexham might be interested in him for transfer. I am also going to offer him out to clubs transfer listed at 8.5 million. If Nesbitt and Masters leave us, we will need to bring in a, maybe a backup defence in mid of some kind, but that shouldn't be too difficult, I hope. Mention the fact that we're looking to sell Marino. No one's bid 11 million pounds. I'm going to transfer list him and offer him out for 11 million. Uh, he's already unhappy at the club, so we can't make him more unhappy and fundamentally, I just don't think he's going to be near the first team. Kayode is another man I am just going to transfer list here. Of course, global transfer windows open in about a week's time, so there will probably end up being a surge of interest in players then. And and elsewhere, Nia Lay is another man who I think I am just going to offer out. He could do a job in an emergency as a Premier League striker. I feel like this kind of player in the Championship and below is great. A pacey striker who can finish. Yeah, we love that. I feel like at this level, though, that kind of pace that he's got 
isn't as much of an advantage when you're playing against as athletic players. One player I'm not sure what to do with is Klaus Jaeger. He falls into this kind of category of squad players who aren't really good enough for the first team. But the issue with the 21 year old here is, I feel like he's massively, massively undervalued. Like in a weird way, I'd love to sign him on a new deal and then look to loan him out. I suppose the question becomes, how much am I gonna have to pay him? The answer to that question is 9,000 pounds. I want it to be a four year deal to sign that. He will agree to it though. And given the fact he'll be on more money, I do feel like he's a player who's just underrated. With the bigger contract, he'll probably see his value jump up. Definitely going to be looking to loan him out this year, though. Ah, Stromberg. Yeah, okay, this is a weird player, isn't it? I've seen the comments about me and signing this guy and saying it's one of the worst transfers we've done in this save game. We signed him for £3 million. He was a squad player last year. W wasn't a good squad player. If we make any profit on him, I think immediately you can't say it's a bad transfer anymore. Currently, he's valued at around £8.5 million. I offered him out for that already. There is some interest in him as well. So we'll transfer list him and offer him out as well. Uh, I, I suppose in a dream scenario, we get a load of bids on these players and then I can go out and find all the squad players we're going to need to really bolster the team with a bit more quality. I feel like I've gone away and I've excitedly decided to sign a couple of players. I do also need to get rid of all the scraps before I sign too many players. Of course, in an ideal world, we sell all the players I've just offered out. In reality, I imagine a few of them are going to be here to start the season. Apparently, Ren are chasing Jao Victor. Jao Victor's just not for sale. This guy has just had mad improvements, hasn't he? We signed him as a League One club. He's been a mainstay of the first team. Had a really, really good season last year, it has to be said. His overall development hasn't exactly been mind-boggling, but he's definitely grown with the club. I just love his mentals. We don't really have a defensive midfielder like him in our team. So I do think around the 30th and 1st of July is when we're going to see a few more transfer offers coming in for all those players that we've offered out. That said, it doesn't mean the sales aren't going to happen right away, because as you can see here, Zitto is leaving the building. The board are going to add on some nice money for that. They're they're apparently going to add on £29 million to the transfer budget. We're selling him for £22.5 Someone can't do maths at this football club. I've noticed here we aren't playing in the under-21 Premier League Cup this year, but sadly our actual under-21 team are still just stuck playing in the Division 3. I feel like we've already increased our youth level, so I'm not sure what I have to do to get them into the higher kind of upper echelons of the under-21 Premier Division. If anyone knows, please let me know the answers on a postcard. You'd think after winning at this level for the last three years we'd be promoted or something, but it's not happening. Okay, Curlin moved delayed to a work permit. That is going to be in a couple of days time he should get one elsewhere bids for marino have been made we've got a bid of 8.25 million for diego marino uh i kind of was hoping for a little bit more money but to be honest to turn what 4.7 million pounds into 8 million i don't think is anything too disastrous don't really want to sell him to wolverhampton wanderers but bristol city of the championship can have him at that price we have also had some bids for stuart masters here a sea of teams willing to offer the six million pounds i've asked for him um i'm a little bit surprised by that if i'm being completely honest uh hmm i mean stuttgart yeah they can do one they've offered 4.5 million i'm tempted just to accept one or two of these offers and then offer him out for a little bit more see if any more teams offer bigger bucks west brom were relegated from the premier league last year so they should have money what i'll do is i'm going to accept the Las palmas and have tafe offers just because i'd rather sell him abroad rather than anywhere else i'm then going to reject the unresponded offers and offer masters out again this time for 8 million. We'll try and get a bidding war going. Saying all of that, I think anything above 6 million pounds for this guy would be crazy. He's not even a 6 million pound player, is he, if we're being real for a moment. Ah, lovely. Okay, Diego Marino, the board are not happy that I'm selling him for 8.25 million. They think we should get more for him. They want 9.5. Uh... That we'll offer him to Bristol City for 9.5 million, I guess. In the intermission as well, I'll just offer him out for 9.5. See if we get any bids. Interesting to note there, at the moment, it seems like it's just mostly English teams bidding on our players. That will probably change, like I mentioned, at the end of the month. Okay, more bids made for Masters. West Brom have just offered 8 million pounds, but with room to negotiate. The temptation to be really cheeky here is real and ask for more, but I feel like if I do that, they're just going to tell me to do one. I'm going to ask for 9 million. They're probably just going to reject this, and I'm going to offer him out for 8 million again and hope that they accept it. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. But if I didn't do that, one of you would have complained, going, why didn't you ask for more? This is, this is why. Annoyingly as well, no one else bid close to the £8 million. Right, we'll reject all those offers, and I'll just hope that West Brom come in again at £8 million. I mean, if they don't, it would make no sense. Gasperi, by the way, on the verge of signing a new contract, didn't need to sign him to a new deal, but a little bit of interest being shown in him. He was tempted to move last year, and uh, with that in mind, I want to lock this guy down. Even if it involves giving him a big wage rise, 
I want him locked to the club. And whilst he's already got a five-year deal, if I need to give him £20,000 to keep him happy, I'm going to do that because I think he is a Premier League quality centre-back. Maybe not as a long-term starting centre-back option, but certainly as a squad player down the line. So annoyingly for us, Bristol City said we're not paying £9.5 million for Marino. So right now he's not going out, but some good news. Masters has had some bids. One of them is the eight million from West Brom. Uh, I'm just going to accept that. Parley was tempted to ask for some kind of percentage of profit at next sale, but honestly, I don't think there's a world where they sell him for profit at eight million pounds. He's he's just not that good. Apologies, Las Palmas and Hetafe. Uh, I am rejecting your bids. Okay, Gasperi new deal confirmed, five-year deal. He is now on twenty-seven thousand pounds a week. But to be honest, for a Premier League player that's still a bit of an underpay. And given what he offers us and how consistent he's been for us in recent years. I just think he's worth it. Okay, we've had some bids for Marino here. Luton have offered £9.5 million for him. I'm going to accept that. Elsewhere, a Saudi team has come in. I want £15 million from the Saudis. Okay, that was ambitious, wasn't it? On the one hand, I don't really love the idea of selling him to Luton, but if they're the only team willing to bid the £9.5 I, I guess we'll just take it. Given the fact I've now had a bid accepted, I'm just going to offer him out for a bit more money, see if we can get anyone bidding more. Luton were promoted with us last year. They were a real kind of shock promotion team because their media prediction was 16th in the Championship. I don't feel like Marino is that good a player for the Premier League. So in terms of selling players to rivals, it's not too much of a concern when he scores against me in a few episodes time don't come back to this moment in the video okay i offered out marino for more money no one's come in with close to what was offered previously by luton so it looks like diego is on his way to luton that it's not that far away from us it's not that luxurious if he thinks it's anything like spain he's in for a rude awakening i think that's the second time in a part prem episode this year where i've just slated luton unnecessarily apologies to the people of luton Okay, Bristol City have made a bid for Stuart Masters of 8 million. That is the bid that we already accepted from West Brom. So I'm going to accept that one there. Elsewhere, <laughs> NDIA being linked with a move to Man City. Apparently, it could be worth 65 million. I mean, that that is more like it, isn't it? Apparently, he'd fit into the starting 11. To everyone who says, Jack, why do you want NDIA? Why is he that good? I mean, he is bloody good. I, I, I know some people are a bit annoyed about the fact his technicals aren't that standout. There are not that many wingbacks in Football Manager that are good. These physicals, these mentals are absolutely sensational. If Man City wants him as a starter, you can assume he's pretty good. And that's why I don't want to sell him. Uh, I mean, he's contracted for six years, isn't he? So we don't need to sell him. Sad news, everyone. We've missed out on a 50% sell-on clause for Miles Maycock because he's just been released by Salford. That's a shame. Whilst I could go out there and look for more young players, I just look for Wunderkids. I need a goalkeeper. A goalkeeper is the top thing I feel like on the shopping list for this year. There are some goalkeepers we've got scouted, the best of which apparently is Anthony Patterson, 32 years old, currently playing for Sunderland, who uh, were promoted via the playoffs this year, just gone. He's on £77,000 a week as a goalkeeper. Is he even better than Kinski? What I will say is when you see Kinski in blue and realise he's on £3,000 a week, it makes you realise like we're, we're doing quite well to have Kinski as a goalkeeper. He's still here for two more years. I would like to get in a better goalkeeper, but if Patterson's the best of all the goalkeepers we've scouted, I don't know how optimistic I am about finding a better player. If I ignore trying to find a goalkeeper that's scouted and instead just look by world reputation, there's a list of well-established goalkeepers here. Goalkeepers that you probably recognise if you've played a little bit of football manager over the years. There's players like Ziggy, who I know has a fantastic face in the face pack. Here he is in all his glory. He's just chilling, <laughs> playing in the UAE. Um, I'll be honest... I don't think he's a £69,000 a week goalkeeper, is he? The highest repped goalkeeper who isn't over the age of 30 is Plamen Andreev, Bulgarian international. I'm very whelmed. What if I look at just transfer listed goalkeepers sorted by values? What is out there? Lucas Jensen is the pick of the bunch, relegated from the championship with Lincoln City. Uh, the fact I'm looking at a League One goalkeeper here, as you might suspect, makes me think he's probably not going to be that much of an upgrade. I mean, is he an upgrade? Mm, he prob probably is, to be fair, but we can do better. I'm certain. I have had this scout search going of find next goalkeeper. It has actually produced some goalkeepers that we've got scouted, but I'll level with you. 
None of these guys seem all that exciting. And also, given the fact we're limited on the amount of young players from outside the UK we can sign a year, and I'm looking for a starting goalkeeper, I don't necessarily feel like a young goalkeeper is the order of the day. I'm going to change the filter here just without looking for older players with a bit more current ability. I'm hoping that maybe this will produce someone if I can't find someone by any other means. I realise as well, it's the 1st of July, contract status expired. What expired goalkeepers are there out there? We'll sort by world reputation. I mean, there are actually goalkeepers. Katarski here isn't awful, is he? But mm, he's not He's not great. We could get Milinkovic Savic's brother. Um, I say that like this guy's not also called Milinkovic Savic. He, well, I'm thinking of SMS. That's who you're thinking of as well. I bet half you didn't know he had a brother. He does. He's actually not bad. Great beard, but 35. I am coming to the conclusion that these goalkeepers with kind of contract status expired are probably not going to be good enough goalkeepers for what we're looking for. Whilst we're here, though, I will just have a look at any other players with contract status expired, sort of by world reputation. There's got to be some good players out here. Dembele was playing for Brentford, wasn't he? You remember, we discovered the fact he was playing for Brentford. Uh, yeah, he's been released by them. He's not very good, is he? Locatelli, 34 years old? No. I mean, Tamori as a centre-back option for one year would not be the worst option in the world. Rem have already made an offer for him. Is he better than Jerdanak? I mean, he's probably a little bit better than Jerdanak now, the 34-year-old, but will he be better than Jerdanak come the end of the year? That is a slightly different question. Uh, I suppose what he does have going for him is lots of experience. At 34 years old, you know, he's an older player. Did actually play 15 times in the Premier League last year for Manchester United. Probably was part of the Manchester United team that beat us in the FA Cup. I am just curious, how much does he want? Like, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> the answer to how much does he want is... Oh, okay. Well, I thought he was only going to ask for a staff role there because it said he didn't want a role. If I offer him an important player, how much does he want? It's going to be too much, isn't it? I'll offer him 20,000. Okay, that is the most anyone's ever counter-negotiated here at Rugby. They want 99,000 pounds. I mean, good luck, Rem, affording that. I feel like Chris Meppham is notoriously overpowered in Football Manager. He's not the quickest player, but he has got some very good mentals, the 34-year-old. I mean, if I'm selling Marino, would this be an awful squad player just to pick up? Like, he's a bit different to Jed, and I a bit better in the air, a bit better defensively. I'm thinking more so for Jed, this guy being our fifth-choice centre-back and kind of coming in as a bit of an alternative option to Marino, who's leaving. How much do you want, Chris? He wants to be a squad player. I'm going to suggest impact sub. He wants £34,000. I mean, it's not cheap. I'm going to try and haggle this down a little bit and then increase the appearance fees because I think he will be a bit more of an emergency squad option. If he plays five games for us this year, I'll give him a one-year extension. How does that sound, Chris? He hates me. £26,000 one-year deal. If he plays games for us, he'll get an extension. I feel like you could do a lot worse than Chris Meppham. Like, don't get me wrong. He's not quick. He's not going to be a spectacular option. But I do feel like when you look at our centre-backs here, we could do with more depth. I know this looks really impressive of all the stars, but the reality is Lehman is a left-back. NDIA is a left-back. Jernanak is obviously centre-back. Marino's not going to be here. Stromborg's not going to be here. Kyoto, I'm looking to move on. Miyazawa... Not so keen on. If I'm going to sign, well, a new centre-back to start and Mepham as a backup, that would give me a bit more depth than we currently have. And we definitely do need a bit more depth. In an emergency, someone like Lee Min could play centre-back. And heck, even Miyazawa could play centre-back. But these two guys, they are the backup full-backs, aren't they? They're, they're not meant to be centre-backs. I know in the case of Miyazawa, he's naturally a centre-back. He's got 12 jumping reach and 8 heading. I don't want him near there. I came in, didn't I, looking for a goalkeeper. I'm leaving, signing Chris Meppham to be a backup centre-back. Ampadu's here as well. Should we just sign the Welsh national team? I mean, he doesn't seem that bad either. I am sad thinking, if I'm on the verge of selling Stuart Masters, right, and I'm also potentially going to be selling out of a defensive midfielder option in Sean Nesbitt, Ampadu at 31 really wouldn't be that bad. 31, short-term option, free transfer. Of course, we've not got the craziest transfer budget in the world. Undoubtedly as well, he's an upgrade on someone like Nesbitt. Is he much of an upgrade on Masters? I think from a defensive point of view, he definitely is. And he could play centre-back in an emergency. It's, it's not stupid, I don't think. I mean, maybe it's a bit stupid, but I kind of want to do it. He does want to be a star player. That is somewhat concerning. Uh... <laughs> What kind of wages is he going to want here? 
He's definitely going to want too much. Are we over our wage budget? We're over our wage budget. Let me just rejig the budget slightly so we can have some more wages to spend. If I offer Ampadu £25,000, what is he going to ask? Okay, you know what? Chris Mepham's fine. Chris Mepham's fine. I thought that we'd found our defensive midfielder option. We have not. I'm now looking at players who are free agents aged at most 27. There's some younger players here. Players like John Melberg, 25 years old Swedish centre-back, plays... For RB Salzburg, he's, he's not awful. He's actually remarkably similar to Miyazawa. If you compare them to head-to-head, -head, he's probably an upgrade on Miyazawa, to be fair. He is three years his senior. He's currently a free transfer. Oh, why, why am I tempted? I shouldn't do it. I'll get a scout report. I started off this search, didn't I, by looking for a goalkeeper. I feel like that's where I need to redirect myself. Let's have a look. I'm looking for a goalkeeper who's 27 or younger with at least 10 international caps. What have you got for me? I mean, Ansu Dole here is a Guinea-Bissau international goalkeeper but he hates important matches, he's inconsistent, he's unadaptable and has a competitive streak. There's a lot not to like there. Luka Levickovic, I hope I'm saying that correctly, Bosnian and Herzegovina, an international goalkeeper, currently plays for Aberdeen. How does he compare with Kinski? The answer is he is better physically, but in terms of raw shot stopping and aerial ability... He's not much of a match. Fraser Barnsley here, transfer listed by Tottenham, international goalkeeper for Northern Ireland. I am questioning how he ever got caps. He is just not good. I've looked through all these goalkeepers. None of them are good. I mean, if I just search goalkeepers by value, there are players that pop up here. Paul Rogers, England youth international goalkeeper for Liverpool. I mean, on the one hand, he's got great aerial reach. On the other, he looks very, very underwhelming and he's inconsistent and he'd cost me over £10 million. It's just a scam, isn't it? I mean, truthfully, we've not actually got that many goalkeepers scouted. I remember looking at Lucas Schumacher before as a goalkeeping option. He is actually quite good. He's not particularly quick. I seem to remember looking at him, and maybe it was last summer, and he didn't want to join me then. I wonder if he's changed his tune now. Is he better than Kinski? Maybe not quite as good in the air, but his shot-stopping and physicals are absolutely insane. 24 years old? How much is he going to cost me? That, I suppose, should be the first thing to check. 300000 to £3 million. I feel like when I'm looking for all these goalkeeping options, there's no one who's immediately jumping out at me. If I bring in this guy and just have him and Kinski kind of battling it out... Is that the worst idea in the world? It might just be a stopgap option for a year or two. What I will say is for a goalkeeper, I love how good his vision and passing are, and that combined with really good reflexes, really good one-on-ones, really good aerial reach and jumping reach, means he does have quite a lot to like for a goalkeeper. Genuinely, I just I don't feel like there is a better option out there. And with that in mind, if I could pick up this guy, maybe using some installments as well for, say, £3 million, that would be quite good. Okay, £3.2 million bid accepted for Schumacher. I have hunted far and wide. Also, I suppose crucially, because he's 24, he's not going to count towards our young players that we've been signing and the limitation we have of six. Wage-wise, he doesn't want an insignificant sum of money, but I feel like we can afford this. He wants £30,000. He does want a relegation release clause. I suppose we'll keep that in to keep him happy. A sell-on fee percentage. You are not having that, my friend. I'm going to try and negotiate this slightly. Five-year deal, 27,500. He didn't like that. He really wants a four-year deal. He's been pressing hard for it. I'm going to offer him a bit more money up front. I'll pay his agent a bit more money as well. Five-year deal, sign on the dotted line. £30,000 for Lucas Schumacher. Currently playing in the Netherlands. Um, not exactly putting in great performances, it has to be said. Although seven clean sheets in 28 is not bad. Maybe Fortuna Sittard are just a bad team. I just feel like for £3 million, pounds, he's not a bad player. Even if he just goes on to be a squad player or a player we sell on down the line. It's not like it's a huge sum of money and a risky investment. If a better goalkeeper appeared in a month's time, I could go in for them and it like wouldn't feel like a disastrous move to have signed Schumacher for the price we've paid. And in some other good news, we're going to get our first signing over the line. Sebastian Kurland, deal done. £8 million to the Great Dane. I like the look of this guy a lot. I think in terms of his physicals, he needs to bulk out a little bit. He's currently only accomplished at centre attack in mid. I'm going to train him as a shadow striker just because, although I've promised him uh, kind of first team status as a star player and that I'll play him as a striker, he's someone who down 
down the line I could see playing as an attacking midfielder. Shadow Striker as well as a role really helps with some of these physicals. I will, however, I think also just tell him to work on his strength. We need him to get a bit beefier and bulkier. I just feel like with 17 dribbling, 18 technique and 16 flair, he's just going to be fun to watch in the match engine, isn't he, Sebastian Kurland? There's a few players who I transfer listed and offered out for set amounts. I've not had any interest in them just yet, so rather than offering them out for set fees, I'm just going to list it as unspecified, see what kind of interest we might get in. Okay, this could be absolutely massive. Miyazak waiting on a work permit. We'll find out about it in six days, but it means barring any hiccups when it comes to the paperwork, this man will be joining us in January. He's just an insane pickup, isn't he? He's just mad. He's one of those players that you find a football manager, you look at and go, J just sign him. Get him on the dotted line. Doesn't matter how much he's going to cost, he's going to be worth it. I love the look of this guy. This might be the first ever part one to a summer transfer special where I'm actually getting transfers done. Like, I feel uncomfortable. It feels weird. Chris Mepham set to sign for Rugby Town. Um... <laughs> Do I want to confirm this one? I'm going to get the scout report in first. I'm also just going to hit delay. I think I am going to sign him. Logically, I think he will come in and basically fulfill the same squad role that Marino did for this year, just duck gone. Just a useful squad player to have. If Marino's leaving us for, you know, millions of pounds, getting Mepham in just as a short-term kind of stopgap option... Just feel sensible. Also, just good to have experience. I think it's safe to say, you know, he's played a lot of games in the Premier League over the years. He should know what he's doing if we call upon him. Okay, Masters confirmed to be moving to West Brom. £8 million for him, I think, is a really good sum of money. Loyal servant to the club. One of those players who I feel like will just be underappreciated. Joined us on a, off an amateur deal where he was playing in Portugal to play for us in League 2. Stuck it out, always been reliable, but we are just at a point now where at 23 years old... We have better young players, we have better older players, and yeah, I mean, to just cash in on him while his stocks are high makes sense. We have had some bids for Stromberg here. Remember, remember Stromberg? I offered him out for an unspecified amount. We signed him for £3 million. I've had two bids here. One is £8.5 million, one is 7.75. I'm going to be cheeky. Uh, Brighton, how does £10 million? So they've been £10 million. Okay. That's good. £10 million for Stromberg. I signed him for £3 million. The comment section has ridiculed me for this guy over recent episodes. Yeah, you're, you're not laughing anymore. Um, right, you know what? We've we've managed to get a bit of £10 million. I might as well push my luck here. Uh, Brentford, £12.5 12 million, and I also want 40% profit. They've bid nine. Uh, Brighton can have him. Schumacher move delayed due to a work permit. That should be granted in three days' time. That should be the goalkeeper position sorted. It's a big day, everyone. Under soil heating has been installed at Butlin Road. Get in there. And while that's all going on, we are packing our bags for our tour around Portugal for a few weeks. We're heading to the Algarve. Another day, another sale. Diego Marino, £9.5 million pounds for him to Luton. I wouldn't have minded getting a little bit more for him, but to be honest, he didn't really develop over the course of last year. Some question marks over how much potential he has to fulfil. We've made a healthy profit, if nothing else. A loan offer for Espinosa. Feels like ages since I've uttered his name. Uh, of course, he was out on loan last year. He did just pick up an injury during pre-season, which is a bit of a shame. I feel like Espinosa feels older than he is. He's only 20 years old, and in fact, it's his birthday yesterday. I've missed his birthday. S sorry, William. Um, yeah, the American, a player who I did have high hopes for, was a bit of an early bloomer. He's not really developed much in recent years, but I'd love to get him out on loan. And, well, apparently he may well be interested in going on loan to AFC Wimbledon. They're in League 2, media prediction of 4th. I actually feel like Espinosa is way better than uh, League 2 quality, but it could be a really good confidence-boosting loan where you can just bully loads of lower league players. So hopefully he ends up going to them. And in some other good news here, Lucas Schumacher has been granted a move. He is going to be joining us for £1.2 million up front, then, of course, £2 million over uh, the next few years. Uh, was a little bit concerned he might get a work permit, so nice to get that done. Apparently he is an important first-team player who has a little bit of room to improve. Super consistent, loves important matches. Uh, that's a good stopgap goalkeeper. I don't look at him and think, you will be our goalkeeper for the next five years, but as a newly promoted team, 
His one-on-one -on -one kind of ability, shot-stopping wise, is really impressive. I have been blocking out the team as we go. Of course, Schumacher will be now between the sticks with Kinski in goal. In terms of the rest of the starting 11, still that gap in the centre-back area, which is a little bit of a cause for concern. But in terms of the bench, I feel like the bench suddenly looks really, really good. Players like Jedanak, Lee Min, Miyazawa. We still got players like Raul Bellardo, of course. Really exciting Spanish player who's shown some potential to really develop. So I'd love to give some minutes to this year. Elsewhere, we've got Kamara, who has just signed a brand new deal at the club. Again, useful, versatile player at the very least. Wesley Gomez, who he signed to replace of course, the Bolivian beast who left us in, uh, well, January. This guy at 19 years old has apparently some room to grow. When we first signed him, there was question marks over his potential. I don't actually feel like he's improved that much yet. So if this is his final form, he's a good squad player. Maybe if he develops, he could find himself being a starter. And elsewhere on the bench, of course, we've got two new additions to the team. The first, Sebastian Kurland, 19 years old. One for the future, but definitely someone who can contribute right away. And alongside him, Takahashi. If we just look at these two guys side by side, kind of very different styles of forwards, but two players who I think can definitely do a job in the Premier League, which at this point is what the aim of the game. And of course, alongside all those players joining us, I've also got a whole host of players here I'm looking to move on. The most notable, I suppose, at this point is Alvin Stromborg, a couple of young players you may have noticed here. I'm trying to send to Chester. And in terms of ins, the only one we're currently waiting on is Chris Meppham, who actually I'm just going to ask to confirm right now. I think the 34-year-old will be a good experienced head to have in the team, a little bit of veteran experience. And of course, we also have Misiak, who apparently is going to find out about his work permit tomorrow. I really hope it's going to be good news. Signing a Chris Meppen confirmed. Welcome, Chris. Not, not sure what we're necessarily expecting from him, but he's just good emergency depth. I feel like now what would be the nice bow to put on the end of the part one of the transfer special is if we could sign Misiak. Sadly, Endor here really wants to ruin the mood. He's turned down a move to Chester. I'm fuming. But here is the high note we wanted to end on. Misiak is agreeing to join us. Work permit granted. He won't join us till January. This might end up being the signing of the summer. In fact, I'm going to say it now. This will be the signing of the summer, even though he's not here for another six months. Also, Malmo have made a bid for Niele. I got excited for a moment. He's valued at 7.8 million when I've offered him out for an unspecified amount. They've bid 2.8 million. Can I reject that? Today has been one of those transfer specials where it's kind of been all action, but like in a very good, productive way. We have signed £25 million worth of players. I feel like we've got in a decent stopgap goalkeeping option. We have, of course, signed Lee Min for £14 million. He is now officially a Rugby Town player, and I think at that price, he is going to be a bargain longer term. Curland for £8 million isn't cheap by any means, but at 18 years old, he is good enough, I think, to be a squad player for us. Maybe a little bit of a concern about his physicals, but he can still grow into his frame, and else where, of course, departures of some fairly high-profile players, Masters and Marino, perhaps the most notable. I think the fees we got for them, impressive, but the most impressive of all, it has to be Zitto, doesn't it? When we signed him on a free transfer, I think I said, I'm buying him with the intention of selling him. Good news, we've been able to sell him. £22.5 million pounds is huge. So right now, I've not got any ongoing incoming deals. We do have a transfer budget of £30 million pounds right now. That could still go up, of course, if Stromborg uh, leaves the building for that £10 million pound bid we've accepted. I think we would get all £10 million pounds of that to spend. Considering that, really, the only starting position I'm immediately concerned about is a centre-back. I think that's going to be the aim of the game next time. I feel like over the last few summers, the part one transfer specials have been me having a meltdown. It feels like it's gone far too well at the moment. I'm feeling remarkably calm. Hopefully, we can continue in this vein of mood and form when it comes to transfers tomorrow in part two. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, if you've got until the end of the video, I want you to go down below the video right now. Let me know what was the last movie you watched. It just lets me know people got to the end of the video. If you want to leave a review for your movie, you can. If you just want to write the name of a movie, just do that. Or if you've not watched a movie recently, just write Chicken Run down in the comments. Help feed the algorithm. Also lets me know people do actually watch to the end of these longer videos. We are back tomorrow to really plunge into the transfer market. I want to spend more of our budget. I promise you we are going to do that. We've been action-packed today. Tomorrow's going to be more of the same. I'll see you guys for it then. I'm out.